for our meditation together at this hour, let us think again on the noble resolution of Joshua when a critical hour had come to his family and to the people in the long ago. In such critical hour, Joshua called his family together and to the people and said, Joshua said unto all the people, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people also said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve and his voice will we obey. These words direct our attention to one of the most thrilling scenes in all Old Testament history. Joshua, the worthy successor to Moses, calls the people to register the highest and most important choice of life. And in the making of such choice, Joshua sets the example and leads the way. A very critical hour had come in the life of Joshua's family and in the life of the people generally. Such crisis hours come again and again to families, to communities, to countries. And when that is known, leaders, whether they be parents or preachers or teachers or whoever they may be, need to take faithful account of the situation and apprise the people faithfully of it and seek for a correction of the situation from the wrong to the right way. The people in this day spoken of here concerning Joshua had become hesitating and irresolute and vacillating concerning the highest things of all. The most difficult person to reach is that type of person. You can reach the downright wicked man more quickly than you can reach the double-minded man. The Bible reminds us the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The irresolute man, the halting, fickle, undecided man. They were in that plight here in the great days of Joshua long ago. And he takes in the situation for his own family and for all the other families, for the people. And summoning them, he said, if it seemed good to you to go the wrong road, make a choice. Uh, as for me and my family, as for me and my house, we, will serve the Lord. And the people answered, we will serve him too. And him also will we obey. A scene like this is one to start one's pulses to going faster. One thinks of that scene back in the early days of the American colonies when the battle for liberty was in the balances to a remarkable degree. And Patrick Henry, yonder in Richmond, in an old church building, with the Congress assembled there, made one of the most unforgettable speeches for human liberty that ever issued from human lips. And in the course of that speech, he said, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, 
give me liberty or give me death. And a speech like that turned the tide that day, as it deserves to turn the tide any day. Now a day like that has been reached in the case of Joshua. Conditions are run down, are badly disarranged and disaffected and are seriously endangering and embarrassing on every side. And the leader took it all in and then made his announcement, made his announcement. He told the people frankly what following God meant. It meant to give him the primacy. It meant that he should come first. It meant that his laws were to be regarded and his will to be obeyed. It meant that his road marked out for his friends needed to be traveled conscientiously by them. And then, in the presence of family and people, he said, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. But as for me and my house, we've canvassed the matter. We've talked it over. We've thought it over. We pondered upon it, and doubtless they'd prayed about it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people, fickle, irresolute, halting, undecided, double-minded, felt the impact of that great man's word. And they said, we'll serve him too. And we'll obey him too. Oh, the grandeur of one man or woman standing for the right anywhere. Many a family has been saved from utter destruction because a little gentle woman, the mother in the house, held hard and fast by the right standards. Many a community has been saved from overwhelming ruin because a brief company of men and women banded together to keep the standards afloat, to refuse to allow the banner of Christ to trail in the dust. And through summer's heat and winter's cold, they stood faithfully by the first and highest and supreme thing. For a different world it would have been without Moses. For a different world it would have been without Joshua. What a different world it would have been without Paul. Oh, what a different world would this world right now be, but for certain men and women in it who keep the home fires burning for God and for the highest, who are never willing to lower the banner, who are never willing to compromise the truth and the right, and with faces set toward the sunrise, go bravely on, witnessing and working for Christ. Joshua was used of God to turn the battle back from the gate. And the great people were rescued from the lowlands to walk and live and serve and love on the highlands because of the brave message and life of this man, Joshua. Now here, is first of all the call to make a great choice, to make a choice on the supreme matter for all time and eternity. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. We're called to make this choice. It is an inevitable choice. We may beat about the bush concerning some questions, but not about this question. Pilate's question is inescapable and unavoidable for every rational human being, namely, what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? Do something with him, I must. I must. I can't evade the issue. I can't dodge it. I can't play neutral. To attempt to play neutral is to decide the matter squarely, for he himself reminds me he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. No third course is possible. No neutral course is possible. 
I must do something with Christ the Lord. Now in his time, as through the generations since, the people are called in that time, age by age, to make the choice uppermost and supreme, the choice of incomparable moment for time and for eternity. Here comes in the supreme prerogative of human life, the supreme power of human life, the power of choice, an omniscient, omnipotent, eternal God has vested humanity with this awful power, the power of choice. And choose we may, and choose we must. We must make our choice concerning our personal relations to Christ. He will not bind us hand and foot and drag us into his kingdom. He will be patient with us and forbearing toward us and long-suffering in our behalf. He will call even after we refuse. He will be patient after we are harshly indifferent and disobedient to him. He'll strive after we seek to drown and suppress all the munitions awakened within us by his spirit. We are called upon of God to make our choice. Man is a queen, king, in the realm of choice and woman a queen in the realm of choice. We can say yes or no to God. Wilt thou have Christ to reign over thee? Wilt thou have him to be thy savior? Wilt thou yield thy life decisively and surrenderingly to him? Yes or no? And as we give our yes or no, so follow in the wake issues <coughs> of everlasting moments. It isn't surprising, therefore, that so big a question as this is crowded upon us while we are young. One has difficulty in understanding the nature of one's thinking, the caliber of one's thinking, who isn't concerned for young people. God's time for them to come is in the springtime, the Easter time, the morning time of life, in the days when their habits are flexible and being fixed. God's time for them to come is while they're young. And this calls for decision, for thought, for meditation, for a facing of the facts, the conditions, the issues, and then for the giving of our vote. This calls for a registration of our decision, registration of our choice. I think that Lowell, in his poem, The Crisis, speaks some of the most biting sentences that are in print in our country today. The crisis, the crisis. And when he gets on down toward the close, the last lines of his great poem, which the young people ought to memorize, hear him, once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side. Some great cause, God's new Messiah, offering each the bloom of blight, parts the goats upon the left hand and the sheep upon the right. And that choice goes by forever with the darkness and the light. In one great hour, issues for eternity is settled and oft times in one great short 60 seconds. Issues for time and for eternity are decided, registered, announced, settled, concluded. In one great hour, Esau lost all by his wrong decision. And in one great hour, beautiful Esther gained all by her right decision. There's a choice. Now what's involved in this choice? Joshua said, choose ye this day whom, it, whom he will serve. If it seem evil to serve the Lord, put him away. But go get you a master. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. We will not take any other person for our master. It's a choice then, first of all, between two masters. Christ or Satan, these two are offerings for the primacy in men's lives. 
choose ye this day whom ye will serve. If you can find good reason, said Joshua, for rejecting the Lord, reject him. On another occasion, the great voice rang out, If the Lord be God, serve him. But if Baal, then serve him. But make your choice, a choice between two masters. Oh, as you hear the nature of Satan and of Christ pitted against each other, as you hear their natures portrayed, their characters delineated, ought there to be any difficulty in your choice as to which you'll serve, as to which you'll yield to and bow down before and accept and follow. Satan means nothing but deception and darkness. Evil and that continually. For this world and the next that never shall end. Satan means nothing but that in human life. And Christ means nothing but good. And good only. And good forever to human life. Now we must take one or the other of these to be our master. Every soul must have a master. If you do not have this or that for your master, you have something else. Some men have their property for their master and bow down to it as the pagans bow down before stocks and stones. Some men have sensual pleasures. Some men have the lust of the flesh. Some men have this or that or the other which pervades and uh, dominates and makes the complete obsession in the life. Whatever you give the primacy, that is your master. Our Lord comes saying, give me the primacy. And then, if we will, he tells us that in the life earthly that you live, it won't be long. Three score years and ten are the allotted time, and not many shall reach that advanced period. If by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. If you reach the four score years, you'll not be here long. But while you are in time on the earth, I will fortify you, Christ says, and undergird you, and I'll speak through you and with you. I'll company with you. I'll be comrade and friend and unforgetting helper. I'll turn your experiences into life, in life, into triumph. I'll make my friends in life to be victors whatever comes. I'll overrule their seeming defeats and make them fall out for triumphs. I'll turn the temporary disadvantages, the seeming hurts and hindrances, I'll turn them into triumphs. Christ promises that we are going to have the victory here in this world with its ups and downs, its limitations, its lapses, its hindrances, its ill happenings. I'll make all things to work together for good to them that love me. You cleave to me, and I'll bring you off more than conqueror in the world in which you live. Now, to go against him means that you're not succeeding, that you're not succeeding. What is success? Success is recognizing the will of God and trying to do it the best you can. He doesn't succeed who forgets that. He may have a bank full of gold. He doesn't succeed who forgets that. Success. Your success is the phantasm of success, the sarcasm of success, utter futility, defeat, if you're leaving the Lord out of your plans. He wants to be your master, and then he says, I'll turn your life into a great triumph scene. If you're in the world 40 or 50 years, or up to 70 or 80, or even reach the century mark, I'll make the flowers to bloom in your path. I'll make the music to echo in your ears. I'll make your hearts to join in the glorious chorus of music to the effect that God's grace, and grace is sufficient for you. And then when the time comes for you to pass from the earthly sphere to the land beyond, I'll be there at the depot of death waiting for you. And I'll convoy you myself. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You need to be afraid about when or where or how you'll go. The automobile may get you, the wreck may get you, 
The illness may get you, but remember, whenever the time comes, I'll be at the depot for you, and I myself will convoy you across, and there'll be no trouble. And then in the land beyond, when all are assembled before the bar of Christ for final reckoning, I'll be there to take the place and to make the defense for everyone who's put his trust in me. I used to be when a lad frightened well nigh to death at the thought of that judgment day of our Lord. As he sits upon his throne and before him shall be gathered all nations and uh, we shall make our account one by one to that great and omniscient judge. I used to be terrorized beyond words. No more of that now. I put my case in my attorney's hand. My attorney is Christ. If any man sin, we have an advocate, an attorney, with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. I put my case in his hands. Manage it, I can't manage it. Take care of me, I can't take care of myself. Save me, I can't save myself. Keep me, I can't keep myself. And he answers back, I'll forgive and I'll save and I'll guide and I'll keep and I'll be with you living, and I'll take care of you dying, and I'll take care of, uh, care of, uh, of you at the judgment, and then we'll live together forever in the house of life above. Oh, this wonderful, wonderful heritage we have in Christ. Now, when ought this supreme choice of all to be made? Joshua said unto the people, Choose you this, choose you this day, whom you will serve. We've beaten about and wandered around. We've drifted and drifted. We've lapsed and failed and wandered. I call for instantaneous decision, said this man of God. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Joshua turned to his family. Will you go with me? And they answered, we will, Father. We will, sir. Oh, that's glorious. That's glorious to see a father saying, boys, will you go with me? To see a mother saying, girls, will you go with me? My children, dearer to me than my heart's blood, will you go with me? And Joshua's family said, we'll go with you. And then Joshua said to the people, I've tried to teach you and lead you. Will you go with me as we bow before Christ and honor him, the Lord over all? And they said, we will go with you. Him will we serve and him will we obey. And that's to be done today. Now, here's the issue ever. Satan's masterpiece ever of cunning and strategy and subtlety and deceivableness is to get us to delay. To get us to delay. His endless maneuvering is to get us to delay. And as long as we delay, Satan is victor over us and not Christ. As long as we concede, I'll delay, I'll defer. I'll postpone manana, tomorrow, not now, not yet. Just as long as our hearts say that, Satan has the reins to our lives. Today, and today this decision should be made because you and I have a work to do today. You and I have an influence to wield today. You and I have an example to set today, a testimony to give today, a mission to accomplish today, a race to run today. You and I are wanted today to live at our highest and best for our own households and our neighbors and friends and fellow humanity near and far and everywhere and above all for the glory of God. And mind you this, every day you delay, the difficulty becomes more serious. The delay makes the case more dangerous. The probabilities of your ever coming are terribly increased. Every day you delay to make your return to Christ. A year ago, a young man said, Well, I had thought to put this off to mature manhood, but I'll not. I'll not. I'll make my commitment now. I'll make my surrender now. And ere the year had passed, he made his surrender. And ere the year had passed, he was called to go. As many a man's called these days to go in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, or in an hour or two, he was called to go. He was conscious in that last moment of struggle in the awful accident to which he was subjected. And he said, smiling, wasn't it glorious that I settled it in time? Wasn't it glorious when I could think straight? I said frankly and squarely to Jesus, 
who calls me, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. I said, I'll come. Who said to me, whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. I said, I will. And I made that surrender. Wasn't it glorious? Said the young fellow, ere he passed into the land beyond. Wasn't it glorious that I settled it in time? I've kept you long enough in this vastly crowded assembly with many, many standing. I'm asking today for a vote for Christ. I'm asking for a registration like Joshua asked. Who? Who? Who will register the choice of eternal moment? Uh, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Will you? Won't you? And the family said, we will. And the people said, we will. Oh, witness for God, spokesman for God, your message is not in vain. Your testimony doesn't fall lifeless and impotent and futile. We ought, we mean to, we need to, we will. And today we'll register our surrender to our Lord.